Hi, I'm Patu from FIFA Cal. Today, let's talk about how to protect our mutual fund investments during a market crash. This is uh, based on a question asked by a reader called Satya. And such questions are uh, going to be uh, widespread and uh, variants of this question. Should I stop now? Should I wait for the market to increase and so on? The reason for that is because for the first time in the, in the history of Indian capital markets, we have a huge population, especially younger population invested in equity for the first time ever and this is the first time uh, they are witnessing such a fall um, and therefore these questions are normal and we're going to talk about um, how you can get rid of such doubts of course what i'm going to say is not going to, is not going to be new to uh, old subscribers i've been saying the same thing again and again but hopefully somebody new will be uh, seeing this and this is for them so uh, you may be aware of what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about asset allocation goal, etc, etc, and risk management and so on. If you think that's boring to you, you don't need to watch it, but you can uh, actually ask somebody, a colleague or a friend who's just started investing in mutual funds to uh, watch it. Hopefully, they will understand and appreciate what uh, I have to say. Excuse me. Just have a look at that. Summer has begun, so voltage fluctuations will start. All right. So let's take a look at this. Uh, uh, this uh, question asked by Satya, he says, Hello sir, I've been watching your videos and reading your blog for a couple of months. I see that you're putting most of your savings in mutual funds. I want to know how to protect your mutual fund investments during a market crash. I'm 40, I want to start investing, but I worry too much about market crash and I'm sticking to FDs. I would appreciate if you can suggest how to mitigate the risk during a market crash. Now, that's a very uh, good question. Um, and uh, one thing I hate, I mean, people have called me a lot of things, good things and bad things. Uh, one thing I hate is people call me conservative. If I was conservative, I would not have 60% of my uh, net worth in equity. And uh, that's just silly. I, I That criticism is unfounded. Other things are okay. I, I don't mind. So let's talk about this. Uh, the first thing is there is no need to worry about a market crash. Or I would say, or let me put it this way. Um... A market crash is not your biggest fear. Your biggest fear should be a sideways market where the market goes up and down, up and down, range bound, and it doesn't, it either neither moves down nor it moves up. And that kind of a market can last for months, weeks, years, and it will just destroy returns. It will completely destroy your returns because time, time, um, uh, Time is actually literally money and the longer it takes for uh, a market to recover or a stock to recover, the lower will be your return. And therefore, the sideway ma market is your biggest enemy. Losing money, that is seeing your portfolio in red or a sudden drop in the uh, market is not your biggest enemy. And that's something that you have to uh, get into your head and uh, understand about uh, the time value of money. The second thing is... The mutual fund industry will keep simply keep saying, don't stop your SAPs, don't stop your SAPs, keep on investing, uh, top up your SAPs, then only long term benefits will be there and so on. This is just propaganda. See, whether you get returns or not, they will make money on their expense ratios, right? So uh, this is a big problem and you have to understand that the fate of your SIP is just sheer timing luck. I have a video about this, how the fate of your SIP is just uh, determined by timing luck. That is, when you start your investments will, will uh, decide how much returns you get from your SIP. And if you look at long-term SIP returns, they will fluctuate a lot. If you take 10-year SIP returns on a rolling basis or 5 years on a rolling basis, there will be huge fluctuations in returns. I have already shown this. Please take a look at that uh, video. You can find it in the... In the uh, I mean, if you go to the channel main page, there is a magnifying glass. Use that and you should be able to search for it. I shall leave the... Uh, article link in the description box along with this article link. So you must understand that it's, it's, it's just how much return you will get in the future from an SAP is just sheer dumb luck. Of course, it's also known as sequence of returns risk. You don't want to leave the fate of your goals and your dreams to just luck. You need to manage it actively. And that's where goal-based investing comes uh, in. So let me show you uh, some examples. I'll show you different examples of what I want to uh, convey. You can see the timing luck video for rolling returns. I don't want to uh, repeat that here. So let's say the from today onwards or from tomorrow onwards, the Nifty goes through 
um, a series of daily returns which are identical to the returns that happened between January 2009 to November 2009. That is the crash. I mean, let me get those dates right. Uh, did I get the... Um, Sorry, January 2008 to November 2008. How the Nifty behaved from January 2008 to November 2008. And uh, that's this period. That's exactly this period. If this sequence of returns is reproduced from here, let's say from tomorrow, the Nifty will fall from uh, wherever it is today. Uh, it will fall by a huge amount. And this is the total returns index. So it will not be uh, reflecting the price value that you see every day and so on. That's a huge... If tomorrow the Nifty goes through a 2008-like situation, 2008 crash, the value will plummet from this blue and uh, to the bottom of this red value and that will happen over the period of about 6, 7, 8 months. And that's the kind of losses that you will have to bear with, that's, you have to handle it emotionally. Now, that's one thing and then, but, but then emotional is fine, but these uh, guys are saying, do SAP, don't stop your SAP, it will always lead to wealth and so on. Because they, they want their commissions and they want the AMCs want their expense ratio. Now, if you start an SIP in March 2010, that is about 10 years ago, and if you track the uh, annualized return, that is the XIRR, month after month after month, you can see how the fluctuate, how the SIP returns fluctuate. Of you, this is a single investment. This is an ongoing single SIP. You are tracking the uh, annualized return of the SIP one month after the another, and you can see initially. Don't forget about that. There will always be a lot of fluctuations because the uh, first few installments. Don't worry about it. After that, notice that after two years, three years, the returns are only about 5%, then it actually goes down after three years, more than three years, it becomes about 2%. Suddenly it shoots, uh, after, uh, after four years or so, it becomes uh, 17%. And then uh, after about six years, a little more than six years, it drops all the way down. From 17%, it drops all the way down to about six, six and a half percent. So that's how much it will fluctuate and you have to be uh, ready for such fluctuations to happen and you can see that it again keeps going up but every time there are market movements the SIP will react to market fluctuations these guys will say SIP will reduce uh, risk and so on that's just complete nonsense and if the uh, nifty goes through that crash then at the end of that uh, uh, this uh, this period at the end of this period your SIP would have uh, would have got a return of about 9.67% now, some people uh, say, oh, that's not bad. No, 10-year ten ten SAP, 9.67% is not so bad. Well, the problem is, if you had shifted the date of your SIP from March 2010, five months back to October 2009, this would be 8.5%. Now, that's about, you know, almost like uh, 10 and a half years away. 10 and a half years away, how many people would have expected 8 and a half re per percent returns from equity? And that too, there was no tax then. Today it's taxable. How many people eight and a half years ago, sorry, uh, ten and a half years ago, <laughs> ten and a half years ago would have expected eight and a half percent returns from equity? It's just not practical. People expect ten percent, twelve percent, fourteen percent from equity, and they will invest less. If you expect twelve percent, you will invest less. If you invest, if you expect eight and a half percent, you have to invest considerably more. Most people don't have that money and please recognize you will know this 8.5%, 9% only after the end of the investment period. All those 10 years is gone. You can't get that back. So this is the problem of expecting uh, unrealistic returns un and leave your SIP unmanaged and just leaving it to luck. This is complete garbage. Stop doing this. Stop saying I will invest 60% of my money in SIP. Long term SIP. I am looking for some mutual fund for next 20 years, 30 years. This is just immature bullshit that people uh, are still in that insurance policy mode where they want to take uh, some mutual fund and start paying insurance premium every month. That's the, that's the mindset that people are in. That just has to go. It's just garbage. It's going to destroy your wealth. It's going to destroy your peace of mind. You must change this attitude and uh, of uh, saying that SIP will work in the long term. It, it, there's no basis for it. Look at this information along with the timing luck video and or the article. I've linked the article below. You will 
have a very different idea of how risky uh, SIP is and how un how risky an unmanaged equity investment can be. So, what is the solution? Everybody keeps saying, "Oh, this guy always talks about problem. He has no other choice. He keeps on saying risk, 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 risk. This part two is immediate. What else? What is the solution? Goal based investing is the best way to reduce or manage or mitigate risk in a portfolio. Once you have a goal, you have a clear deadline. You have a target corpus. Once, of course, initially you need some kind of return estimate, but that can be as low as possible just to make sure your expectations are low." But beyond that, once you have the target corpus, that's your goal, not the returns. You can't eat uh, with returns. Then you're not going to hold on to the equity uh, investment for 60% for so long. If you, some people say, oh, for 15 year investment, no, you can hold 60% equity up to 12 years. Last three years, you can reduce. This is all garbage. Uh, I show in my lectures on goal based uh, portfolio management how you can systematically reduce equity exposure and continuously practically from day one and how you can uh, manage uh, to achieve your target corpus no matter what the market conditions good market bad market sideways market it doesn't matter and that's what we talk about and so you must have a plan the idea is to have a goal have a deadline have a asset allocation plan and have a variable asset allocation plan where you're going to reduce your equity uh, you can say I'm going to hold 60% equity for the first uh, half my duration, let's say for 15 years, 7 years and then I'm going to taper it down. Whatever it is, it's up to you but back test it, it will be better if you do it. Even if you don't, at least have a plan and stick to it. If you have a plan and stick to it and focus on the target corpus, not on the returns and, uh, and just leave it to hope and faith, you should be able to uh, achieve your goal, you should be able to get your target, that's what uh, ultimately matters. It's not about the returns, it's about investing right. And if you are able to incorporate the variable equity allocation into your goal planning from day one, you will invest an amount which is close to the right amount from day one. You will know what is the right amount only later on. If later, if you invest 1000 rupees and later uh, assuming 12% returns, uh, later on the returns are 8% 8, 8 percent, eight and a half percent. you should have invested 2000 but you lost all the time. This will not happen if you have the correct asset allocation strategy from day one. You are investing the right amount provided you also have reasonable return expectations. So that is the reason why you need to have a clear goal, clear variable asset allocation plan in mind. Then you don't have to worry about market risk. You don't have to worry about market crashes. You can efficiently mitigate these risks and sleep peacefully. Uh, check out those lectures on goal-based portfolio management, check out my robo-advisory, those are all tools that will help you handle this better. Bye-bye.